The low-hanging fruit in any election campaign is to get tough on law and order, and the votes will come easily. In this week's column, Duncan Garner compares the two major parties' strategies. Duncan, what have you found? Well, I mean, the, the Labour is sticking to to its guns, which is that um, the current system is working, the wraparound services, um, to slap them with a wet bus ticket, this is youth crime. Um, we don't we don't um, send our young people to jail. We don't. We don't put them in lockup. Um, we hug them and, and we, we bring them into family group conferences. And, and and the evidence is that it's working and it has worked. I reckon. I reckon it's a it's a struggle to convince the public um, that that's working, and that that's the way to go. And and so Nationals brought in this new approach, which is an old approach of, you know, get tough on uh, youth offenders, which is bring back the boot camps for a start. I, I actually agree. I think we need to try try. Uh, a different approach or a mixed approach of carrot and stick, and you, I don't, wouldn't turn them boot camps, but you need some kind of correctional um, uh, camp, but more positive, um, like an outward bound, a spirit of adventure, something like that, that says to these kids, right, you need a circuit breaker, you're hanging out with the wrong people, um, your next step is adult, adult jail, we don't want you to go there because you'll turn into a real criminal, so we're going to try and change your life, give you people skills, these kids, we have no idea, they're living in abject poverty, being um, surrounded by gang members and bad people, and and um, and they're 10, 12, 11, whatever years of age. So you get them early, take them out of their house, and try and change their lives. It's the minute they go back to that environment, they return to normal. You see, so mm. they return to that that behaviour again. It needs a circuit breaker. The current system, if you look at it, is just recycling these young kids to go back onto the street again. The police drop them home. They pick them up and drop them home sometimes twice a night. So. I'm in favour of trying something. Mm -hmm. There's, it has been tried before, these boot camps, mm. and there's evidence that it hasn't actually worked. And mm. for kids that perhaps it did work while well, they're on the programme, mm. like you say, they go home and uh, they're back to their normal activity. So what would be different this time around? Uh, ch change the nature of the camps. Don't call them boot camps and don't don't have them... Uh, just just change your approach to the camps. Turn them into something more positive that facilitates, you know, positive thinking and outcomes. I mean, even Sir Peter Gluckman, who wrote a number of the reports on the on the former boot camps, has said it's time to try something else. Maybe maybe try maybe redesign the camps, redesign the approach, bring in role models in a more positive way rather than making them do ten sit ups every ten minutes. You know that sort of thing. Uh, uh, on an outcome basis, you know, so look for good, look for good outcomes. Try something. The current recycled approach uh, is not working. And if we if we think that we can't design a program that's going to work, then we give up too easily. There's got to be places around the world where it's working. If it's not, then it's, let's design something ourselves. We've got to try something. Because yeah, other, otherwise we're saying that the current system's working. It's not. Mm -hmm. Now, you write in your column that fewer boundaries, the loss of corporal punishment in schools and the removal of smacking at home mm. and glorified gang life in New Zealand has had a disastrous impact. Yeah. Are you arguing if we had corporal punishment uh, or smacking at home, <laughs> yeah. society would be better no, off? No, I'm not arguing for these things to, to return. Like, I, I was... Um, I'm, I'm, I, I, I was I was caned at school, and um, I, I mean, if I think now, would I allow my son to go to school to get whacked by someone? No. Um, the smacking defence um, that had to get changed, and I support this. I don't, I, I'm not saying that we need to bring these things back, but I'm saying to all these things that have been taken away, and parents, parents haven't, and I'm one of these parents. We haven't been schooled up, and and, and you know we we learn as we go. We haven't been we haven't been taught or told how to deal with these things. Losing some of those disciplinary, you know, we were hit as kids. But now we, I don't hit. I've never hit my kids. Um, it's, the, it's just a, I just don't do it. Um, so what other ways do I discipline, and how do we do it? It's a, it's a constant battle, and our kids are young, smart, and they work around you, and they know what the rules are, and they're consistently on social media, and they're seeing things that we never saw as kids. You know, they got, they have access to an amazing world, an astonishing world, but there are bad things happening in that world. So they see all sorts of things, are exposed to all sorts of things. We're a guinea pig generation as parents. Uh, and we're dealing with it, and so and our kids have have had few, they've, they've never had so few boundaries in life compared to now. And parents are working double shifts and late shifts and early shifts, and it's just it's life is no longer nine to five white picket fence. Mm. It's that was New Zealand. It's it's no longer now. And are we coping? How have we coped? And what's been the result? You you also note in the column that the the obvious thing at play here is intergenerational poverty. Mm. Um, surely that's the root cause that politicians need to address. Of course, and that's why I put it in there. Uh, and I see this up north a lot as well as the intergenerational. Um, well, for a start, it starts with housing and the cost of housing. The, the poverty starts with the cost of housing, the cost of rentals, the quality of them. Um, it's appalling in New Zealand, and we've we've just we've locked a whole bunch of people out of 
housing, home ownership, and also um, affordable houses. We don't we don't have them in New Zealand. There's no such thing. So that's where it starts. It leads to poverty, and then poverty leads to stresses. And Bob's your uncle. You've got everything else that comes with it. And until you address poverty, uh, I don't think you've really got nuts. So you can have the boot camps, and you can have all these things around the edges, bollards, and things like that, which are all ambulances in the middle or the bottom of the cliff. If you don't have poverty, then you have so few of the other problems that exist. Poverty drives it. And I'm, I, if I had the answer to poverty, we'd, we'd have it on the front page yesterday. Um, I don't. But having tax cuts for the upper uh, uh, echelon in society, I don't think addresses the problem. It pushes the gap and makes it wider and further. So <sighs> poverty is a massive thing. And I think you have to identify, Bill English started this work, start the social investment into the families that need it. So you identify who are the struggling families in New Zealand. They know who they are. They know their names and where they live and who, how many kids they have because it's all recorded. Um, it's why they uplift babies from some of these families. So they know where the struggle is. I think they need to return to that proper, real social investment, which is where the wraparound services are required. And until then, I, I think we're going to struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's Labour that's coming up with the wraparound services. Hmm. Where are they? Are they working? Are they there? I mean, we, we hear so many shortages in this area of councillors, of staff, of, of, of people. And you hear about the, the so-called wraparound services, and I'm just, I wonder how effective they are if, if this is what we're seeing. The other thing is you never see success as well. So where there are successes, where they do turn lives around, the media don't run those stories. And so there will be successes. We just never hear about them because they're so hard to, well, it's, it's, it doesn't, they don't make great news stories, but I actually think they do. Maybe I'm a bit different there. Maybe leaving the parliamentary press gallery has, has widened my widened my sort of look at society. But I think success stories are really important, and the media should should uh, follow more of them. Duncan, thanks for your time. No worries.